So we want to talk about classes with resources today, but derived classes with resources, which essentially means you have uh, dynamic memory allocation in a base class, and you have a dynamic memory allocation in a derived class, and you want to see what happens when copying and stuff happen. Uh, have it. There is nothing new to teach when I tell you, you're going to say, of course, because it's just a common sense, but I'm just letting you know. So uh, as you see over here, I, ha I created a base class. Uh, now the base class of mine is just uh, to see what happens. There is nothing special in this. It's just for teaching and syntax purposes. Um, and what I'm going to have over here, obviously, is going to be something to print the data just to see what's going on. So in here, I'm going to have something like O stream reference uh, uh, print and um, O stream reference uh, uh, out. And I'm going to say return out. And uh, in here, I'm going to put, print the M data. OK? M data. Simple, straightforward, nothing special about it. Uh, and then we're going to have a derived class. So we create a class over here uh, that publicly inherits uh, the base. And let's say this derived class of mine gets the information of its own. So in here, I'm just going to put a float M data for this one, just to see the data and everything is the same. But obviously, when you inherit, each one have their own. So by doing something like this, when I want to actually make sure everything is happening properly, because as you see, the other one is following rule of three, which means we pretend that it has some dynamic memory allocation inside. The fact for us is that because that one has rule of three, the derived class should follow suit. It doesn't matter if the derived class has dynamic memory inside or not. You have to make sure that everything is followed to the point and properly done, which means in here, so if I have a constructor for this that uh, say, what does it do? Easy. So in here, I'm going to have the derived uh, uh, constructor that accepts a float data, and it passes that one to the base. We know that already, that we can invoke a constructor inside the constructor of the derived class, which means we can actually tell the derived class how to build the base part of its own. We do that. So in here, I'm going to say pass the integer cast of data for, for, the dat for the data that you have to the base. So base will have the whole part of the float. And in here, I can um, initialize the M data of uh, the, uh, the object over here. And obviously, in here, it's a good idea to, to have something saying something like C out uh, defaulting. So I'm going to say def uh, base. Later on, we can add the values to see exactly what's happening to what. But our attention over here is to see what is called when. So we have all these messages coming up. <clears throat> so obviously, when I do something like this, let's see what's going to happen. So the derived, the base class of mine over here, uh, as it, it's got nothing, right? So um, let me just uh, override the, uh, the print over there. And in here, I'm going to say, uh, what do I say? I'm going to say I want bases. Uh, print to get called, passing out to it, and after that, I want to go. I want to do uh, return out, and I'm gonna. What am I gonna print? I'm gonna print uh, ta -ta 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 -ta, m data. Okay, it's gotta be lots of digital. Uh, uh, um, lots of. Uh, Digits after the decimal point, but it doesn't matter. Obviously, if we make this virtual, then it's going it's to make our life easier. So I'm going to make it virtual to make sure, to make sure what? The latest, the latest version of the print is called. And in here, I do not need to do it twice. I'm just going to do it for the base and the 
the derive is going to use it anyway. So in here, O stream reference operator and O stream reference out. And we have a constant uh, base reference coming in called B. Now tell me what my mistake is here. I'll pause so people don't. Thank you. OK, so 2% for final. <laughs> I'm not joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. OK, so, so in here, so because print is not changing anything in the unit, it has to be const. Otherwise, the proper uh, uh, overloading of the insertion operator will not work in here. I cannot actually say return b.print because the print over there is not constant, right? So that's that. And obviously, I have to make this one const too, so it actually overwrites that one. Remember, the, the, the const is part of the signature. If you don't make it const, it's not overriding the other one. You can actually have two functions with the same name, one constant, the other one non-constant. And the compiler will pick the one properly. So if the object is passed as constant, the constant one will be called. The, the one that is not, so remember that. It's part of the signature of the function. If you recall, we created, uh, we created uh, an index operator, and we created two different ones. One was constant, the other one was not. The index operator that was constant was just giving the data read only, but the index that was non-constant, it was returning the reference, and it could change the object. So you can have the same signature in two different ways. So that's all I'm doing with this thing, and let's see what happens there. Okay? So first thing first, creating a derived. So I'm going to say derived. Uh, a and B, okay? So I'm creating, and obviously I forgot to put actually some values over here. So by default, this is going to be, say, uh, point 0.2. And this one, uh, oh, not point 0.2 is bad. So I'm going to put 2.2. 2. And uh, for this one, I'm going to put 1. I need to have some default. Okay, so now if I say over here, uh, C out A and B, and just see what happens. Just run it and see if everything's good. All right. So as you see over here, it says default, defaulting base, defaulting base 2.2, and then so two, so two default bases are getting called. This, did I? No, no, wait, 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 wait. Uh, I forgot to put space, and in here I forgot actually to put defaulting derived. So usually I put some kind of a. Uh, reference up there, and I call this one DB, this one is DC, and then uh, say, but that's too, it's like this is, is, is better. So when I run the program now, I can see exactly what happens. By just creating those two things, what I'm going to have is defaulting base, uh, defaulting derive. Um, let me just make it better. So let me go to new line in here. So I'm going to uh, write everything that belongs to base in uh, with no indentation. And for this one, I will put three space index, one, two, three, and then I'm going to go and L. I hope it makes sense. Let's actually create a destructor for this too. So in here, I'm going to say derived. And see out uh, deleting uh, the right. All right, what do I have in here? I'm just printing the two. So let's run it one more time and then analyze it, and then we'll get continue after that. All right, so as you see over here, when All right, so <clears throat> the default A is created. This is the first one. 
and this is the second one. These are the two, two point, 22.2. Did I put 22? How did that happen? Oh, space is a good thing. Because the other one, uh, I'm just printing, and I see in here I'm putting data. So let's put something like this. I'm going to say B M data. And I'm going to go like that. So let's put it like this, actually. I'm going to say basis data. It's all about proper messaging. And this one is going to be, uh, where is it? So this one is going to be the uh, derived data. I think that, that makes more sense, right? Run it one more time. There we go. So as you see, base 2 is created, uh, base 2, derive 2, base 2, derive 2. So everything is created properly. And at the end, when uh, uh, the destructor is called, as you see, the opposite direction is for deletion, if you, if you recognize. You see, this is default created derived created, then default, then de uh, 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 the base is created, then derived, then base, then derived. And here it's exact op opposite. First derived dies, and then base. So everything died in reverse order. Extremely important, especially for walkthroughs that I put off for you, OK? So now, question is, what happens if I actually copy one to another or assign one to another. Will the parent's assignment call be called or not? That's the question. So if I say over here, if I say over here something like this, uh, void uh, PRN, and in here I'm going to pass derived, definitely that's going to be a copy. There is no question about it, correct? And in here I'm going to say C out, uh, I'm going to say PRN, And then I'm going to print CP, right? Now, let's pass. And now that we have seen this, I'm not going to create two different versions of it because it's going to be just crowded. I'm just going to pass that derived to PRN. So I'm going to say PRN A. Easy breezy, right? So when an object is passed by value, what's going to get called? Copy construct. There is no doubt about that. So now we're going to come over here and we're going to actually say base copy, base, uh, and let's make it like this, base assign. Okay. And, and see what happens. See if the, if the, if the, the copy constructor of the base is called or not. So if I actually run it, you will see that. Yeah. So take a look. <clears throat> what is this? So the copy constructor will be called, which means we get the message that when we have a derived class out of a class that has resources in it, the rule of three and assignment, let's assign it and see what happens just for you to see. So in here, I'm going <clears> to. <throat> Um, C out. I'm just going to put separators so it, it's, it, it becomes easier to, to, to see what happens when. So now in here, I'm going to create a B. And I'm going to put over here 20, for example. And in here, I am going to say A is set to B. And I run the program. Seriously? What did I do wrong? What was wrong? OK, one more time. No, what is the error? Oh, must return a value. Shoot. Again, forgive me. Today, it's a little. 
<laughs> okay. So, one more time. There you go. You see that? So, when you have a derived class out of a base class, and the derived class follows rule of three, your base class doesn't need it because your base class is, if you don't care about how the base class is getting copied, then uh, you can actually uh, ignore it. But let's check one more thing. In here, an assignment happened, so we actually assigned it, correct? Let's see what do we have in A now. So I'm going to say C out A. And show the value inside A. So if everything's good, A should be set to 20, right? What is the value inside A? So the base assignment happened. B is 20, D is 20, everything's good. Are we okay with this? Any problem? Okay, that's usually the rule in C++. You see, you, can, you don't need to create a default constructor if you don't create any constructors, right? But as soon as you create a constructor, then you, you are responsible for it. That's what I'm going to go to now. So in here, what I'm going to do now, let me uh, save this over here. I'm going to say uh, uh, A, uh, derived classes with resource. <laughs> that is derived classes with resource. I hope you remember it. <laughs> All right. Let's bring it up again. <clears throat> now what I'm going to do in here is this. I'm going to come to the derive and actually create a copy constructor for the derive. So I'm going to say derived uh, float that um, constant <laughs> derived reference D. Okay, and in this constructor, uh, copy constructor of mine, what I'm going to do, I'm going to say uh, m data will be set to D dot m data, correct? Right? Okay. So if I do this, now let's see what happens to that printing thingy that we had. Okay? So because this is the assignment that we check, so we don't need that. I'm just going to have the B set to 20. Obviously, that means it, it, it's calling the constructor, one argument constructor, and then I'm going to print the B and see what's going to happen. And when I run it, I'll see this. Take a look. Isn't base supposed to have the integer version of 20? It didn't. One more time. If you recall, when we created a derived one, we passed the integer version of it to that one. Just to make sure we understand what I'm talking about, I'm going to do this and run it one more time. So this is 21 to 3. B is supposed to be 20 now. It is not. So remember, when you take over and create a copy constructor that is supposed to handle the construction of the derived class, then you're responsible for everything. It means like a regular constructor, now you have to decide how to go on with copying the base site. Which means now I have to actually mention over here, what am I going to do with base? You can say I want base to be 100. Anything you, can, you want, you can do with it. You can decide how it's supposed to be copied. So anytime I'm copying the derive, I want base to be 100, no matter what the value was. You can do that. Or you can actually copy it, which means we know that a derive object can always be handled by the base's reference, correct? 
So when I actually pass the D to the copy constructor of base, it's going to only copy its base part, as if I'm passing it a regular base. And because <coughs> the copy construction of base over here, whatever it is, gets, sets the M data to the data that is coming over here, it's going to actually copy the data from the value that it had, and therefore, you're going to have proper copying done. So remember that. If you do not, if you do not touch rule of three in the derived class, the base class will take care of itself. But as soon as you start fiddling with it, you are responsible for the whole thing. It's the exact same thing for the assignment operator. So if I want the proper assignment operator to be used in here, I have to say something like, where is it? Here, so if I want the, the copying to happen, the, the, the assignment to happen properly, what I have to do over here is to say derived, exactly as I would, uh, I would uh, overload the copy assignment operator. <coughs> operator, assignment, and in here, uh, const derived reference D. Now, all I need to do over here is, of course, I'm going to do the copying, which means, um, and, uh, first, let's take care of the base. I can simply say base operator equal and pass the D to it. No problem with that. So I simply call, but you will see people do this too. And then equal to, don't do that. You have a very clean and nice way. Remember, operators are just functions. Like a human being called a function version of it, instead of trying to force the compiler to do it for you. Never leave anything to default when it comes to programming. Always, if you know behind the scene something is going to happen, call the behind the scene, not to be in doubt. Because believe me, one day you're mistaken uh, about the default thing, and that's when it's going to hit the fan. So now, now that I have this one, I can actually say m data is equal to d dot m data. Or you can manually do whatever you need to do. It's a function. Do whatever you want to do in there to accomplish what you want to accomplish. And now if I do it like this, the assignment will work properly, and everything is done and done. That's it. That's derived classes with resources. Now, change that thing with dynamic memory allocation. Do a, so just follow the logic. The only thing that you need to remember is that if you implement rule of three in the derived, you're responsible for the whole thing. If you don't and the base is taking care of it, then you don't need to worry about it. Okay, the base will get copied properly the way it's supposed to. Questions? What? You should do anything you want. That's what I said. And it's not that you shouldn't. Oh, uh, oh, what I mean is that all I'm saying, so first of all, what is rule of three? Tell me. And? And? Copy assignment. Okay? So when you have a derived class, the very first thing you need to check is the base class as virtual, uh, this uh, destructor vir virtual. We talked about it before, so I'm not repeating that. We said from now on, any destructor you create must be virtual, no questions asked, okay? Number two, you have to see if your derived class needs copy constructor, copy constructor and copy assignment. If your derived class doesn't need it, you don't need to worry about it. The base class will take care of everything by itself. You don't need to worry about it. That's what object orientation is, okay? But as soon as you see the derived part needs some process happening more when it's actually copying, that's when you need to take care of the child uh, of the parent too. So if you take the automation out, everything becomes manual. Then you're responsible to see how the base is getting copied. If you don't implement it, automatic. If you are implementing it, you have to implement it to the bone. You cannot just leave it as is. Yes. Mm -hmm. And they have fish because, say, eight. And no and dynamic memory allocation, then you don't no need. Dynamic. So I don't have to add anything. No. The base class. 
the base class will take care of it. I have to apply rule of three only for the base class? Yes. Yes. If you want, as practice, do something like that, sure. But if you don't have to. Okay? <coughs> okay. Are we good? Yes. Aha. Uh -huh. I don't, maybe I didn't mention this. Do you know what's the meaning of transitive? Transitive. Something is transitive. It means it transfers through. Uh, virtuality is transitive, which means if in a base you have a method virtual, automatically the whole descendants are virtual. You don't need to mention them. Which means if the assignment operator is virtual, all the assignment, actually not assignment because the signature is different, but like you have a print and print is virtual, you don't need to make the other one virtual. Everything along the time, uh, along the hierarchy become virtual. The same thing with the destructor. If you make the first one uh, virtual, you do the rest. But what did I mention just two seconds ago? Don't leave anything to default. Do it <laughs> if you are not sure. Okay? So, <clears throat> This is not actually good. It's very good practice to actually write virtual, to make sure that uh, you are conveying the message. So if somebody doesn't know the source code of the base, it knows that this, this structure is virtual. OK? Anything else? Transitive. No. Three, four, five. Three, four, five. Three, four, five. We'll talk about backwards thinking. No, no. Okay. It's uh, type. When we go to templates, I'm going to teach you new, new types of casting. So the casting is not happening like you did it in C. Like you actually write into like this casting is no more. It's considered unsafe. We have more intelligent casting. More, uh, yeah, automatic. Mm -hmm. We have casting that you have to tell what is your intention of casting. And if your intention is not that, compiler will give you an error. We'll kind of come to. So we have four different types of cast. Three different, you have four, I don't remember. But anyways, we have different types of templated casting that you're going to see what it's going to. Next semester, I'm two, uh, the second half I'm teaching, I haven't gotten my assignment yet. I got it. But, yeah, anyway, so, so that's that. So that's uh, uh, derived classes with resources. Now go play with it a little, and then I'm going to give you a practical thing for it to do. But um, let's now uh, take a look at Milestone 3 and see what's Milestone 3 and what you're supposed to do, okay? You know that Milestone 3 is up, right? So let me just...